Hello students, next two modules are related with the fly ash. First module is on the fly ash generation and management and second module is on the fly ash notifications issued by government of India for the use and management of fly ash. You know fly ash is a special kind of waste although several people call it byproduct. This fly ash is generated in coal fired thermal power plants. Huge quantities of the fly ash are generated and uh, fly ash are a big danger to the environment as well as lot of land is required for their disposal. So, in this module we shall be learning about various sources of fly ash generation, properties of fly ash as well as characteristics and classes of the fly ash. The second objective of this module is to understand various processes in which fly ash can be used. You know coal is primarily used for electricity generation. When we produce energy or when we produce electricity from the coal that time coal is pulverized. Pulverized coal means coal is powdered to the size of less than 0 0.55 mm and this pulverized coal is burnt in the coal fired thermal power plants and heat is generated. Normally coal is pulverized so that maximum amount of the coal get burnt or no amount of coal goes as unburnt because this become economic process. Coal meets approximately 30 percent of global primary energy needs and 42 percent of world's electricity is generated using coal. Globally coal reserves have been estimated at over 861 billion tons. India accounts for 286 billion tons of coal reserves and the other major countries which have major chunk of coal are United States of America, China, Australia and Indonesia. We have huge amount of coal. So, based upon the availability of so large amount of coal it can be predicted that for next 2 or 3 centuries coal will be the major source of electricity generation. This figure shows the coal mines in India. India has fifth largest coal reserves in the world. Of the total reserves which are present in India 80 percent are non cooking coal reserves. About 70 percent of India's coal production is used for power generation. Remaining 30 percent is either coming from uh, non renewable sources uh, this uh, gases as well as from the oil. In the financial year 2015 and 16 the coal consumption by thermal power plants was about 536 million tons. In India coal based thermal power plants account for about 60 percent of electricity installed capacity. In financial year 2015-16 the coal consumption for uh, thermal power plants was 536.64 million tons and during financial year 2015-16 the coal based power plant installed generation capacity was 1,45,044 megawatt from 151 coal stations. In this the period of 2-3 years the number of uh, thermal power plants may have further increased and this installed capacity may have further increased. The India's coal is characterized by high ash content in range of 30 to 45 percent. If we compare this with the imported coal, then imported coal has lesser ash content in the range of 10 to 15 percent. So, we can say that the imported coal produce lesser ash as compared to the Indian ash. Indian coal has other useful characteristics. Uh, the useful characteristics of Indian coal are that it is having low sulphur content 
when it is having low sulfur content then lesser sulfur dioxide gas is produced. The sulfur content of Indian coal is less than 0 0.5 percent. Indian coal also has low iron content, low chloride content and Indian coal has high ash fusion characteristics. The quantity of ash in coal varies from plant to plant depending on type of coal used, source of supply and also on the type of combustion used by that particular plant. The average ash content of the coal used in thermal power plants during the financial year 2015-16 was 32.94 percent. Let me have look on the use of ash in the history. Ash from volcanoes has been used in the construction of many Roman structures. Fly ash has been used to build Roman Colosseum about 2000 year ago. Actually volcanic ash is the same as fly ash. The only difference is that volcanic ash is produced by the natural activities whereas fly ash is produced anthropogenically by the burning of pulverized coal. Let me come to the different categories of ash. Primarily ash is categorized into three categories and these categories are fly ash, bottom ash and economizer ash. Fly ash is very fine material and generic name given to the ash which rise from the flue gas and captured by electrostatic precipitator of the thermal power plant. Normally fly ash constitutes 70 to 80 percent of the total ash produced at a thermal power plant. Bottom ash is that ash that is coarse in nature and do not fly with flue gas and this is collected from the bottom of the boiler of a thermal power plant. Normally bottom ash is 20 to 30 percent of the total ash generated at a thermal power plant. Economizer ash is the recovered from the economizer hooper and APH hooper. This is very small in quantity and the properties of economizer or APH ash are very similar to the bottom ash. Now what is fly ash? Fly ash is a byproduct of combustion of pulverized coal in thermal power plants. During combustion of coal, the mineral impurities like clay, feldspar, quartz and shale etc. those are present in the coal, they fuse in suspension and float out of the combustion chamber with the exhaust gases. As the fused material rise, it cools and solidifies into spherical glassy particles and this is called as a fly ash. This figure shows the same image of the fly ash. You will find in this figure that fly ash particles are spherical, glassy and shining and are, are of almost same size. As per the MOEF notification issued on November 2009, the term fly ash means and include all ash generated such as electrostatic precipitator ash, dry fly ash, bottom ash, pond ash, mound ash, etc. So this is uh, what has been defined as fly ash by Ministry of Environment and Forest. Classes of fly ash. According to American standard for testing materials C618, fly ash is classified into two classes and these classes are class F and class C. Class F fly ashes are normally generated due to combustion of anthracite or bituminous coal and these are good quality coals. Class F fly ashes generally contain less than 10 percent calcium oxides. That is why class F fly ashes are called as silicaceous fly ashes and these fly ashes due to lesser content of calcium oxide are pozzolanic in nature. 
As far as class C fly ashes are concerned, class C fly ashes are produced due to the burning of lignite or subbituminous coal. Class C fly ashes typically contain calcium oxide in the range of 10 to 40 percent means calcium oxide content is higher in the class C fly ashes. Class C fly ashes are calcious in nature and these are due to presence of this calcium oxide cementious as well as pozzolanic in nature. This table shows the physical properties of fly ash. The physical properties of fly ash largely depend on the type and operation of coal mill and operation of burner. The fineness of fly ash is measured in terms of surface area and the surface area of fly ashes is in the range of 250 to 270 meter square per kilogram. As far as the particle size is concerned, the particle size that is retained on 45 micron sieve is 40 to 50 micron. Compressive strength of fly ashes is 80 to 90 percent and the color of the fly ash collected from electrostatic precipitator is somewhat grayish white in color. This color may be variable depending on the source of the coal and the kind of combustion used by the thermal power plant. This table shows the values of the physical properties of fly ashes uh, from different uh, plants and uh, in the first uh, column and we have taken three type of coals here for the purpose of comparison bituminous coal, subbituminous coal and lignite. You will find that uh, the specific gravity of the fly ashes is generally in the range of 2 to 3 and fineness that is the percentage retained on 45 micron sieve. If we do it by wet sieving generally in the range of 17 to 46 and uh, via dry sieving this is in the range of 10 to 33 or 34. As far as specific surface area is concerned, uh, that is uh, variable from uh, 127 meter square to 580 1 meter square per kilogram, but generally this is in the range of 200 to 300 meter square per kilogram. Let me come to the chemical properties of fly ash. Again chemical properties of fly ashes are highly variable depending upon the source combustion etc. Fly ashes contain a number of oxidized uh, metals and let me have a look on the range of the percentage of different uh, constituents of the fly ash. Silica as SiO2 is present in fly ashes in the range of 49 to 67 percent. Alumina is present in the range of 16 to 29 percent iron oxide is present in the range of 4 to 10 percent, calcium oxide is present in the range of 1 to 4 percent, magnesium oxide is present in the range of 0 0.2 to 2 percent, sulfur oxide is present in the range of 0 0.1 to 2 percent and loss on ignition means unburnt carbon in fly ash may be in the range of 0 0.5 to 3 percent. Reasons for handling the fly ash that why fly ash be managed or why we properly handle the fly ash. Fly ash being light mixes with air, water and pollute the environment. Fly ash disposal in surface water body may affect the aquatic life. This may be harmful for the our fish and other animals as well as if fly ash is disposed in the surface water bodies this may lead to siltation problem. If fly ash is inhaled by human beings or by other animals this may cause respiratory problems. Fly ash may also affect our agricultural crops. A number of reports are available and according to those reports if fly ash is used in appropriate quantities, 
then it is useful, but if higher quantities are used, that time this may be harmful to the crops as well as to the other plants. In addition to that, land is required for the disposal of fly ash and you all know already we do not have land, so that we can spare land for the disposal of fly ash. So, in that situation, we have to manage the fly ash. As I told in the beginning, many people call fly ash a byproduct of uh, coal burning or coal combustion instead of a waste. Lot of research is going on on the uses of fly ash and several uses of the fly ash have already been commercialized in which fly ash is used. So, the major uses in which fly ash is at present used are fly ash used in brick making and in block making, then concrete products production making use of fly ash, then production of lightweight aggregates from the fly ash, then concrete and mortar production from fly ash, then cement manufacturing from the fly ash, then asbestos products manufacturing, use of fly ash in road construction, use of fly ash in embankments, in backfields and land development as well as fly ash is used in the mine filling. This is used in agriculture also up to a certain extent and nowadays fly ash is used to manufacture the fertilizers also. Dear students, these products cannot be produced by using 100 percent of the fly ash. A fraction of the soil can be replaced by the fly ash and to what extent fly ash can be added in these products that has been notified in the fly ash notifications and the details of that you will study in next module. To brief that in fly ash bricks, if they are not having clay, then 50 percent fly ash can be added. If uh, clay is present in the soil that is used uh, to make the bricks, that time up to 25 percent of the fly ash can be added. In cement, up to 15 percent of fly ash can be added. Then there are several other uses of the fly ash and the other uses of fly ash are use of fly ash in making floor and wall tiles, making of refractory bricks from the fly ash, then manufacturing of ceramics using fly ash, then recovery of metals from the fly ash. Several research projects all over the world are going on for the recovery of metals because you have seen the chemical pro properties of the fly ash and it is evident from the properties of fly ash that it contains several metal oxides and these metals can be recovered. Then fly ash is used in the manufacture of alum also. You have seen that fly ash contains significant amount of uh, alumina, so it can be used in the manufacturing of uh, alum. Nowadays several agencies are using fly ash in making of synthetic wood or uh, in the making of plywood. These are some of the uses which are recorded. People are doing research in different universities or different institutes all over the world that what may be the other uses. So, dear students, I will suggest you please search about different institutes and try to find out that what kind of research regarding use and applications of fly ash is going on all over the world including India. This figure shows the detail of utilization of fly ash. Basically the uses of fly ash can be divided into four categories and these are low value uses, medium value uses, high value uses and as a soil amendment. So, the low value uses of fly ash are use of fly ash in minefields use of fly ash in embankments, then use of fly ash in backfills, use of fly ash in highway base as a soil stabilization, use of fly ash for structural fills, then uh, for water dam concretes and for harbor structures. 
if we come to the medium value uses or applications or utilizations of fly ash they include production of lightweight aggregates making of fly ash concrete production of pozzolanic cement production of cellular concretes then production of uh, bricks grouting slabs wall panels and prefabricated blocks so these all are building materials basically which are produced and these come under the category of medium value if we come to the high value uses of fly ash the high value uses of fly ash include metal recovery from fly ash magnetite recovery then uh, production of mineral wool then production of uh, plastic fillers production of ceramics production of uh, lightweight refractory substances production of uh, ferrosilicons and production of exotic htm tiles so these materials if produce making use of fly ash then we can say that these are the high value uses of fly ash fly ash can be used as a soil amendment also this can be used for the soil conditioning of high clay soils acid clay virgin soils as well as for slightly lumped clay soils so this table shows the uses of fly ash this pie chart diagram shows the fly ash utilization during the year 2015 and 16 from this pie chart we can find that maximum fly ash to the extent of 24 to 25% has been used in the cement then about 8.3% of fly ash has been used for making bricks and tiles about 5.85% of fly ash has been used in the year 2015 16 for the mine filling about 7% has been used for reclamation of low lying areas 6% of fly ash was used in ash dike raising small quantity about 2.83% has been used in the roads and uh, flyovers a very small quantity about 1.25% used in the agri cultural sector this is one sector where the production uh, this utilization can be increased then in concrete 0.44% has been used and in hydro power sector 0.02% of fly ash was used in 2015-16 and other miscellaneous uses utilized about 4.6% of the fly ash after so much utilization about 40% fly ash remained unutilized in 2015-19 even today in 2000 19 we are not able to use our all 100% of fly ash we have to give more emphasis we have to use more and more efficiently the fly ash so that no fly ash remain unutilized let me show you some pictures of the fly ash use these pictures show the fly ash bricks that have been produced making the use of fly ash to have more details of this i'll suggest you either visit some brick plant that is making use of fly ash in your vicinity or a number of good videos are available on the youtube so i'll suggest you to please have a look on that that how the fly ash bricks are prepared these pictures show the use of fly ash in making the roads payments and walking lanes government of india is having a center for fly ash research and management that is called as c farm the objective of c farm is to facilitate large scale adaptation of fly ash utilization and safe management technologies through capacity building and development of technology delivery mechanisms inter alia to promote and undertake r&d for in depth understanding of and value addition to fly ash and thus to position c farm as a leading resource center for fly ash use and management this center has been created by government of india for the fly ash use and management 
let me have a look on various activities of sea farm. The activities of sea farm include to undertake, promote and facilitate research and development in the area of fly ash, to provide technical support and facilitation for large scale utilization and management of fly ash, to undertake and facilitate dissemination of information and awareness creation, to develop wide network of technology delivery mechanism through experts and institutes, to undertake and conduct short term courses, technical forms, trainings, technical seminars and conferences mainly for the capacity building, to collaborate and facilitate scale up and large scale adaptation of fly ash technologies, to provide scientific and technical guidance as well as support for fly ash management and 100 percent utilization plans for thermal power plants, ecological solutions for management of fly ash with conservation of water, power and land, fly ash processing and value addition, durable and economical construction through fly ash, higher agricultural yield and reclamation of wasteland making use of fly ash, manufacturing of fly ash based products and use of fly ash for various applications and strategic policy matters and carbon credit related issues. So, these are the activities those are taken at the sea farm with respect to the solution to fly ash problem or to solve the fly ash related issues. To summarize this module, in this module we have studied that what is fly ash, how fly ash is produced, what are different physico chemical properties of fly ash and what are the major uses of fly ash. We have further studied that fly ash uses can be divided into low value uses, medium value uses, high value uses as well as we studied different activities which are going on at the sea farm that is a agency of government of India for giving solutions for the management of fly ash. I hope you have enjoyed this module. Thank you.